Hi everyone, um, this is Tiffany with Mommy Advice and um, I've been getting a lot of questions on my profile or my channel and also on my videos asking me what is a molar or partial molar pregnancy. Um, I'm going to read this information from the American Pregnancy Association regarding the definition of molar and partial molar pregnancies and I wanted to let you know that this is in no way um, a replacement for a doctor's diagnosis. I am not a trained medical person. Um, I'm simply just going to read you the definition and it would be up to you to seek medical advice um, for any symptoms or problems you might be having during pregnancy. Okay, so what is a molar pregnancy? A molar pregnancy is the result of a genetic error during the fertilization process that leads to growth of abnormal tissue within the uterus. Molar pregnancies rarely involve a developing embryo, and the growth of this material is rapid compared to normal fetal growth. It has the appearance of a large and random collection of grape-like cell clusters. There are two types of molar pregnancies, a complete and a partial. Uh, a complete molar pregnancy, they only have placental parts, there is no baby, and form when the sperm fertilizes an empty egg. Because the egg is empty, no baby is formed. The placenta grows and produces the pregnancy hormone, HCG. Unfortunately, an ultrasound will show that there is no fetus, only a placenta. What is a partial molar pregnancy? This Now, partial molar is what I experienced with my first pregnancy ever. Um, a partial molar pregnancy occurs when the mass contains both the abnormal cells and an embryo that has severe defects. In this case, the fetus will be overcome by the growing abnormal mass rather quickly. An extremely rare version of a partial molar pregnancy is when twins are conceived but one embryo begins to develop normally while the other is a mole. In these cases, the healthy embryo will very quickly be consumed by the abnormal growth. Now, I was told when I had my partial molar pregnancy, and this isn't mentioned on the website, but this is how it was explained to me, that basically in the case of a partial molar pregnancy, two sperm somehow fertilize one egg. So one egg has the genetic information of two sperm. Um, so, and in my case, they actually saw fetal parts um, the embryo, they actually found a heartbeat, which was crazy, and, um, uh, what else was I going to tell you? Um, oh, and I started to have, um, bleeding pretty much a couple of days after, um, I found out I was pregnant, and I was in the UK at the time. My husband happens to be British, um, and at that time we were living in the UK, and, um, they, they honestly didn't know what they were looking at um, when they saw it on the screen and the tests came back about um, a month after I had my DNC and it was discovered um, that I had experienced a partial molar pregnancy. Um, now, this according to the American Pregnancy Association, who is at risk for a partial molar pregnancy? In the U.S., approximately one out of 1,000 pregnancies is a molar pregnancy. Um, uh, white women in the U.S. are at higher risk than black women. Women over the age of 40, women who have had a prior molar pregnancy, women with a history of miscarriage. What are the symptoms of a molar pregnancy? Vaginal spotting or bleeding, as I mentioned earlier. Nausea and vo vomiting. Now, nausea and vomiting are usually extreme because the, at least that's what I experienced, because the HCG hormone, the pregnancy hormone, is um, way, way, way higher than in a normal pregnancy. So it makes you really sick. I mean, I couldn't even keep down saltine crackers. So you think I'm complaining about this pregnancy. That one was way worse. Um, uh, you might develop rare complications like thyroid disease, 
early preeclampsia, which is a high blood pressure, increased HCG levels, so the pregnancy hormone level as I mentioned, and no fetal movement or heart tone detected. How do you know if you have a partial molar pregnancy? Your doctor would need to perform a pelvic exam. Um, it might reveal a larger or a smaller uterus, enlarged ovaries, and abnormally high amounts of the pregnancy hormone HCG. A sonogram will often show a cluster of grapes appearance, signifying an abnormal placenta. Um, how do you treat a molar pregnancy? Um, okay, well, I went through this follow-up. It's a little bit different with a partial molar pregnancy because um, when you experience a molar pregnancy, you are at risk for something called trophoblastic disease. And um, basically, I'll read on. Um, about how you're treated, but it says most molar pregnancies will spontaneously end and the expelled tissue will appear grape-like. Molar pregnancies are removed by um, suction cutter dilation and evacuation, a DNC, or sometimes through medication. Um, general anesthetic is normally used during these procedures. Yet I was given um, I had a DNC but then had uh, remaining tissue left over, so I was given um, a drug called methotrexate, uh, which treated um, any remaining tissue um, it caused my body to, it killed it off basically. Now, um, it says that 90% of women who have a mole removed require no further treatment. Follow-up procedures that monitor the HCG levels can occur monthly for six months or as your physician uh, prescribes. Um, for six months, I had to get blood and give urine samples to make sure that my HCG levels were dropping. Um, they, they dropped, they were normal, they went down to zero within three months. Um, now, you are at much higher risk for trophoblastic disease um, if you've experienced a complete molar pregnancy. With partial molar pregnancy, that is not usually the case. If your HCG levels after a molar pregnancy were to not fall between, I think it's zero and two or zero and three, which would um, be considered normal or um, for a woman, um, then you would be um, at risk for that disease. And so they'll continue to give you the drug methotrexate and mo may monitor you for up to a year and ask you not to get pregnant for up to a year. Um, so, as I just said, follow-up is done to ensure that the mole has been removed completely. Traces of the mole can begin to grow again and may possess a cancerous type threat to other parts of the body, which is trophoblastic disease, as I mentioned. Um, pregnancy should be avoided for one year. Any birth control method is acceptable with the exception of an intrauterine device. Now, um... I was told not to take oral birth control pills um, afterwards because it can mess with the HCG levels. So, you know, there are contradicting opinions, I guess, but um, really it's up to your doctor to um, tell you what he wants you to do. Um, can I have another molar pregnancy? If you've had a molar pregnancy without complications, your risk of having another one is about 1 to 2%. Um, now, instead of thinking, oh, I have a 1% or 2% chance of having a partial molar or molar pregnancy again, think, okay, I've got a 98 or 99% chance that I won't have another one. So, um, positive thinking. Um, again, this is not, I'm not a medical professional. I'm just reading um, what the American Pregnancy um, Association says on the matter and giving you my personal experience from what I went through. Um, I went on to have a healthy pregnancy. I got pregnant six months after my miscarriage, after my partial molar pregnancy with my daughter, and she's beautiful, she's happy, um, she's perfect. And um, right now I seem to be experiencing a very normal pregnancy as well. Everything's going great. Um, no spotting, no bleeding. So, yes, um, there is hope for those of you who might have experienced or are currently going through a molar um, pregnancy of some sort. Um, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys subscribing, and I wish you all healthy and happy pregnancies and um, healthy and happy lives. Be safe, and um, thanks for watching.